Hi guys, it's Wendy here from Wendy Wise Beauty. Thanks for stopping by. Today I will be doing an unboxing and I will also be reviewing two recently released uh, niche fragrances. Actually, one of them just released last week. It is a fragrance from Parfa de Mali or Perfumes de Mali Palatine. This one was highly anticipated. And the second scent, it is Rocca by Christian Provenzano. I will start the video with Christian Provenzano. I did order a sample of a Christian Provenzano Rocca and I fell in love with this fragrance so I decided to go ahead and order a full bottle. I received my package from Aus Liebe zum Duf of First in Fragrance. I think they ship worldwide. I'm not affiliated with this company but it is where I normally order a lot of my niche fragrances and samples and it came and this is what's in the box. It is a very nice card that they normally give and inside there is a feather which is sprayed with a latest fragrance and then I got some bonbons in here and they did include a perfume sampling pad with quite a lot of sheets. They did send me some samples. I did not pay for samples so there are three samples in here and my fragrance. It's inside and this is what I ordered. I used every drop of this sample and uh, this is a fragrance I decided after wearing this sample that I could not <laughs> do without it. So, oh. So this is what the packaging for Christian Provenzano. This is my first order from the brand. And this is the box. Very nice. And the fragrance is inside. This is so funny, guys, because this is a very, you can say, high-end niche fragrance, right? And this type of box we have all seen from Latafa or Katlaj and a lot of these Middle Eastern fragrance houses. And this is what the fragrance looks like. I am not sure if all the fragrances are Extrait de Parfum, but uh, Roca, it is Extrait de Parfum. And this is the bottle. Oh my God, this is so pretty. I have seen this perfume bottle in a lot of uh, niche perfumeries in the windows so finally I can have one of those to play with at home. The perfume that they sent on this feather it's Creek Delphinus. I have gotten Creek Delphinus from the last three orders I have placed. However I want to see what samples I received. So I got from Catusia via Camarelle and from Diptyque uh, Eau Rose and then from Byredo this one is called Flowerhead. I don't know why guys lately regardless of where I order my niche perfumes I am getting either samples from Diptyque or Catusia. Strange. First time spraying from the bottle. <laughs> I saw a review about this fragrance on another uh, fragrance blogger's website and she did say that this was a summer fragrance and at the time I saw the video I also thought you know that this is a summer fragrance because it is very sweet but to my astonishment when I got this fragrance in the sample and 
I wore this fragrance for the first day, I realized that this is not really a summer fragrance per se, this is more of a fall winter fragrance. Raka, it starts off as an extremely sweet fragrance, however it has a very strong saffron note which remains throughout the life of the fragrance. The top notes they are raspberry, saffron and orange. The saffron is there in the opening. It is not as strong. It is more of a very sweet raspberry opening. This fragrance, it is very sweet. You have to like sweet fragrances to like rocker. However, when it gets to the base, the sweetness tones down quite a bit as the woody notes and the musky accords come out. The saffron note in this fragrance, it is so perfectly done. The heart note, it is rose de mai, caramel and peony. This is not a goma fragrance. I barely sense any caramel. There is a lot of saffron laced with uh, raspberry, there is amber, and there is musk. After the fragrance opens, the saffron note, it really takes over, and throughout the life of this fragrance, there is always saffron and raspberry. The amber note comes in later in the dry down, and the dry down, it is a very nice base of amber, musk, also saffron, with sweet hints of raspberry here and there. This is an amazing fragrance. The fragrance, it makes such a drastic transformation. When I first sprayed this on my skin, I was thinking, oh my God, such a fruit bomb. It is so toothachy sweet. The saffron, it is not as pronounced, but by the time this fragrance gets to the heart note, the middle of the heart note, it transforms more into an amber fragrance, more saffron, more amber, with musky notes and just slightly laced with raspberry. This is a gorgeous scent and it is well worth getting a sample of this fragrance and trying it out. I will definitely be giving this one a run for its money. It is very pricey, but it is extrait de parfum. And this fragrance, it is really a beast. I very seldom sprayed more than two to three sprays of the sample and I could smell this all day and the next day it has beautiful sillage and performance is not a problem. This is a hundred milliliters. I think this will last me forever. I think the price point is totally justified. Not only that it is extrait de parfum, however, this fragrance, it is very complex. It makes such a transformation. And in the end, the olfactory journey, it is just beautiful to accompany this fragrance from the opening, the first spray, to the ending of the fragrance at the end of the day. It is absolutely gorgeous. There is also vanilla in this fragrance, but in the dry down, in the heart of the fragrance, I do get more of a beautiful musk accord than a lot of vanilla. This is just so pretty. The next fragrance I am going to review today, it is from Perfumes de Mali or Parfum de Mali. This is a fragrance which just dropped last week. It is called Palatine and it is supposedly, you know, the idea behind the fragrance it is the Princess Palatine. Guys, I was expecting so much from this fragrance due to the price point and also due to the fact the story behind this fragrance, you know, this whole princess story and Princess Palatine, I don't think she had a very happy life. So I was expecting complexity, a twist, you know, 
because this is a niche fragrance house. I ordered a sample of this because I was ordering some samples anyway for doing some comparisons with some uh, Middle Eastern fragrances that I am working on. The top notes in Palatine, it is pear, mandarin and bergamot. The heart is simply violet and it is laid on a bed of musk and sandalwood. I have been playing with palatine for a couple of days. When I sprayed this fragrance, I was thinking, is this the fragrance that I read so much about? I looked at the notes again, I read the whole marketing jargon, because I could not believe that this was the fragrance I was smelling. This fragrance, the opening, it was very ordinary. It does have a beautiful opening. It is pretty, it is violet, but it is not on the caliber of a fragrance in this price range. Also, another little issue I had when I spread this fragrance Immediately, immediately, I started thinking of this fragrance here. This fragrance, it is from Gila, it is Aqua Allegoria, and it is called Flora Salvagia. When I compared these two fragrances, there is not such a huge difference. I mean, you can say that Palatine is inspired by Flora Salvagia, and the difference to me is Flora Salvagia has a bit more body, a bit more structure. So, I got through the opening of the fragrance, through to the heart note, there was not any big transformation and the dry down it is pretty much a very soft musky floral dry down it is beautiful you can say it is a fragrance for a princess who has had a perfect life i get very little sandalwood in this fragrance it is just an everyday easygoing comfortable fragrance and this is for me unless if i am missing something i do not get any kind of complexity in this fragrance after the fragrance is sprayed you can say the heart note and it starts to transform. There is a powdery accord which starts to appear in the fragrance and it remains, but there is no other, I could say, um, stage in the fragrance where it becomes complex. It just remains pretty linear. This is very feminine. It is very light. I think it is a crowd pleaser, but for the price point and normally the type of fragrances that you do get from Parfum de Mali, I was expecting a lot more. And due to the fact I do have Flora Salvagia, I wore a lot of this fragrance. In the summer, I fell completely in love with Flora Salvagia. And this one, it is costing about, I would say, 100 euros. This one from Perfumes de Mali, this will be for me an easy pass. I mean, I think this would have been a much better fragrance had the sandalwood notes been done a bit differently. It had a bit of woody accords. When this fragrance is really in the base note where you would expect this nice whiff of sandalwood, you know, which makes this very classy, very sophisticated, what I do get is a soapy accord. I mean, it is not a bad one. I normally don't do soapy. It does not um, nauseate me. But at the same time, as opposed to getting warm, sweet woods, which makes this a bit 
different. I am getting a sepia cord. It does not project a lot. There is not a lot of sillage. However, with the experience that I have made, the fragrance, it does remain on the skin. I can smell it. It does not disappear. When I first tried it, I thought, oh my God, this will be gone in half an hour but it was not. So I think this fragrance will have a lot of fans because fragrances are subjective, fragrances are relative to taste. However, for my taste, <laughs> and I work so hard, guys, for my money, this one, I will not be picking it up. Thank you so much for tuning in, for listening. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Send me a few comments and hope to see you again soon on my channel. Tschüss!